From the time the Empire of Dawn fell, the world has been ruled by one power and one alone, dragons. And as long as there have been dragons, there have been those entranced by them, in awe of them, obsessed with them. And sometimes there becomes a man so obsessed with power, so obsessed with dragons, that he will stop at nothing to follow that dream. In 54 AC, eggs were taken from the dragon pit, a small clutch laid by the mighty she-dragon Dreamfire. This would not be the first eggs taken, nor would it be the last. What captivated the people so much was the sheer amount taken. Three eggs, a full clutch, taken and sailed across the narrow sea. From there, who knows where they went. Yet, this is not the full story, for there were more eggs taken that year. One man, one fool obsessed with dragons and power, make a daring move of their own. Not on Dragonstone, but in the place of kings. Sir Lyman Hightower, a cousin and well-liked squire of the Lord Hightower, had become utterly obsessed with dragons, ever since his mother read to them each night, telling tales of the Conqueror, of knights who had ridden to slay dragons, of the times where dragons ruled Essos, and by extension Planetos. His obsession only grew with age, as soon Sir Lyman was one of the captains of the guards of Old Town, and with that privilege came Tamina the Citadel, time he would use to sneak books in and out. No prohibited books, of course, just ones they wouldn't notice. Books about dragons. He learned of their fiery rage, of their meals, of the dragon pits in Valyria, and how these same designs had been replicated well in Westeros, and how caves had long been their natural home, the only thing close to the volcanic chambers where they once resided. In early 54 AC, the young Lord Hobart Hightower attended an event in King's Landing, and brought with him the Hightower Guard for the tourney. They were all offered the chance to fight an attorney if they so wished, but Lyman instead decided to spend his time in the city, looking, waiting. When the festivity grew to its finest, one loud night, he broke the laws he had promised to uphold. Just like he had once snuck books from the citadel, he found himself sneaking into the dragon pit each night to watch the beasts. It would often be hard to see them in the dark, but he sat in an unnoticed area, alone, able to simply observe, to stare at those gorgeous beasts and their fires. It was on one such night, staring upon them, that he saw a sight. An egg. Not one laid in the large cloisters or in the horrid piles of heats and liquids as the rest of the eggs. This one had been forgotten, thrown to the sides. He couldn't even tell who the egg belonged to. He knew it was wrong to do so, but he didn't hesitate in acting. He climbed down the trellises and used loose bits of the walls to climb down, avoiding the dragon keepers and security, moving into deep darkness. A single swinging tail or breath of fire would kill him on the spot, yet his mind was too focused. That madness, that desire, called to him. The egg within his hand his secret. When they returned to Old Town, no one seemed to raise an alarm about a stolen egg, no one seemed to care even. For months he kept the egg warm inside the tower, uh, until a year later when he had been considered to have distinguished himself enough to earn a wife and title. He finally could choose his path. He was offered beautiful manors on hillsides, he was offered a small keep on the manda, but Sir Lyman turned them all down. He was offered fine ladies of high houses, and turned them down too. He asked only for two things. The ruined keep on the cliffs of the South Shields, and a lowly cousin of House Valarian, one so low in stature that none would deny the request. They were stunned, they mocked the mere idea. Lyman had been offered a boon, and he had chosen this? Lyman was happy, however. This was not just any ruined keep, it was cliffs high, one which lay upon the shattered and staggered linings of the isle. Beneath it lay a cavern, one of the largest in the realm. 
but definitely the largest in the reach. The perfect place to raise a dragon, if he could ever get it out of this damned egg. Over the next ten years, he built his home. Raised to a lord, he had chosen the name of House Doron, a word his new wife, Alisara, had given to their keep. Rock, she said it meant. Well, stone in Valyrian. That seemed suited to him, staying in one place, stalwart, unmoving. For his sigil, he chose to keep the Higher Tower lineage visible, for he kept the tower upon his flag, but replaced the flame with a green dragon, because from his son onwards, there would always be dragon blood in their line, Valyrian blood. In his mind, he was certain he would birth a dragon rider. He would not let his hopes and ambitions die with him. He spent any coin he had upon approving the keep, creating infrastructure, making it livable. Then much of the rest of his gold was spent on strange purchases. In secret, he bought a dragon kill, a small pot where an egg was supposed to grow. He sought the aid of retired dragon keepers, paying them well to advise him. His son, Griffor Doron, was born in 61 AC, and on his 12th birthday, he was shown the secret, the dragon egg. It was beautiful, a purple shade emanating a warm heat from deep inside it. From the moment he touched it, he became fascinated, sharing in his father's desire to learn more and more. He began to study, buying books from the Citadel to learn more of dragon keeping and rearing, as if he expected the dragon to hatch, demanded it to hatch. By the time he was 16, he was married, but only as his father had arranged a marriage, a marriage with a Valyrian girl, like he'd always requested. The blood of Valyria was needed for dragons, he knew that. And so he'd followed in his father's footsteps, strengthened their bloodline, and married a Valyrian girl. He spent little time with his wife, never knowing her, bothering with her. In fact, he even spent her dowry on a new set of books. Serwyn Doron was born in 83 AC, and immediately, Griffor took note of reading his books and dragon keeping about how baby's warmth seemed far greater at awakening an egg than any pot or purpose. It's why Valyrians laid their eggs along their babies, to forge a bond with each egg. Yet he never truly saw it as a gift to his son, more a means to an end. The egg was his, it was, was meant to be his, and so he sat by the bed each night, so that he too could be near the egg, waiting, waiting. Lyman Sue passed, not even seeing his grandson's first birthday. But with his passing, a fire seems to burn. And after a year, the egg had hatched. And from it, there came a small beast of the most beautiful blue and purple. A dragon which shone a fine shade. It looked beautiful. <laughs> a sapphire. And so, it was given that name, Sapphire. And from the moment of their hatching, they lay beside the young boy, a baby not even a few months old, sleeping beside him. They were close, as if they were almost siblings. Griffor was enraged. It was his egg, given to him by his father. It hatched for the boy, but the boy was his blood. The boy would get the damned dragon when he was gone. That night, as young Sapphire curled beside Serwyn, Griffor demanded the dragon be removed, that they be chained and carried beneath Cliffs High, where he could train her, where Sapphire would come to love the man who had dedicated his entire life to the damned dragon. He kept it there in secret. Far from anyone. And if any were to find it, well, he claim it was a wild dragon, chained for the safety of others, to keep the truth of the egg secret. Sapphire just needed time. Sue, she'd forget Serwyn, and be ready to bond with her true rider. As Serwyn came of age, he was asked to train as a knight, and he was squired in the South Shields, by the many educated and behaved knights there. 
He did not train alone, for a boy his same age, Gilbert Seri, trained beside him. The boy was the heir to the South Shields, and a vindictive and cruel child, one who paid no credence to the lies and rumours from Cliffs High. He saw this dragon for what it truly was, a lie and fabrication, designed to make the otherwise forgettable Lord Griffa appear to be some high lord, rather than the lord of some ruins on a forgotten coast. Sowen didn't know how to respond to that, he barely knew his father well enough to know if it was true. All he knew is his father coveted the South Shields more than anything. Gilbert often mocked and abused the smaller boy until one day he found Sirwin was no longer smaller than him. A growth spurt at 13 was the first of many. By his 15th name day, Sirwin was over 6 foot tall. At that age, he had already advanced in his training. He was sent to Hightower to train under Lord Hobart, the Hightower blood in him still being recognised all this time later. He was knighted by Hobart Hightower on his 17th name day, returning back home to the South Shields, a well-respected man. While he had grown, so had the secret beneath the cliffs of House Duron. The caves which had once confined Sapphire no longer could do so. They had grown and grown, and now were 17 years of age. They were an adult dragon, no longer a hatchling. And while they had been trained and well kept, growing in their space would soon do them harm. It would stifle their growth. They were not bound. They were not trained, truly. They were polite, but not loyal, not yet. And so Lord Griffith decided it was time. That night, with a lantern in his hand, he clambered down the chiseled steps of his poorly made dragon cave, entering at a time when his dragon keeper slept and his guards were told to stay away. For he knew if they saw him, they might try to dissuade him, to scare him away from the mighty beast, or, even worse, scare the beast from him. He could hear them all the way across the cavern, those heavy steps, that furious and deep breath. The dragon was tired, hungry, sad, alone, perhaps. All the other dragons grew up in a dragon pit, alongside brothers, sisters, cousins, parents. Sapphire had been there all alone. He approached, the light from his lantern illuminating that beautiful, scaled creature, the orange light shining off each and every scale, giving the room a deep blue shine. Sapphire lowered their head towards them, not to bow, but to sniff, to smell them, to take careful note of his scent. They will recognize me, Gilbert thought, his heart beginning to rise. They recognize me. Sapphire's head began to move closer to him. Sapphire did recognize him. Sapphire recognized the man who had fed them, the man who had kept them tied and trapped, the man who had left them there, far from their bond. That night, Sapphire's fires were unleashed, and there was nothing remaining of Lord Griffith the Ron by the time the sun rose except a lock of his hair, and a pile of ash. There was no large procession or funeral for Lord Griffa. In truth, Sirwin wouldn't have even attended if he didn't have to keep up appearances. Approaching his 18th year, he was hastily named as the Lords of Cliffs High and the head of House Duron, and for some time, that is all he was. Rather than his father who kept these ruins as ruins, Sirwin made efforts to restore the keep with what coin he had. He took loans from his cousins in House Hightower, gifts from others, doing whatever he could to expand the outer courtyard and walls, before establishing a new main keep produced of the stones of the cliffs themselves. They were strong, firm, and cheaper to transport. By his 19th name day, the reports had come. Sapphire had broken her chains. She was too strong to contain now, and she was hungrier than ever. She would fly into local areas to devour entire herds of sheep and cattle. She would swoop at anything she could eat. She was becoming a threat. She was becoming dangerous. It was clear her appetite would soon move from sheep to people, unless she was dealt with. The dragon keepers attempted to keep her fed and tame, but she grew more rowdy. They felt 
Only one option remains should this continue. They came before Lord Sirwin and made a humble plea. Slay the dragon, or free it. That night, accompanied by forty men of the guard and sheep stuffed with nightshade in order to make the dragon too woozy to fight, Lord Sirwin approached Sapphire for the first time since his boyhood, first time since he was a babe, and looking upon it, he saw those scales flickering from the moonlight upon them. He saw pleading blue eyes staring right upon him. This was no beast, it, it was beauty. He could understand why his father was so captivated, but could not understand why his father was so foolhardy, so selfish, so absent. He moved forth, approaching the beautiful thing, extending a hand out towards it, closing his eyes as he felt his death was imminent, only to feel something press against his hand in turn. He felt glove pushed against hard scales, and he opened his eyes found the creature with its head bowed towards him. This violent and angry beast the dragon keeper spoke of was completely absent. The beast was lonely, abandoned. It was treated more like a toy than a being, only ever cared about when it benefited Lord Griffel. Sapphire was Sirwin. And in that moment, he had never felt more close with anyone else, any other. The other men took a step back, their hands still on their blades in fear of what could come. Only to watch the dragon's neck begin to curl, bringing it to rub against the side of Sirwin, who for a moment once more felt like a boy. Before a moment arms of the power began to surge through him, his hand was guided upon the back of the dragon, and he let himself begin to climb. Climbing upon the scales, Sapphire still had a saddle upon her back, one the father had constructed, unused, eroded by time, but he could still pull himself on top of it, gripping and holding to it. Sapphire could feel the bond as they began to rise, pushing their wings from beneath the water, sending the water flying across the cavern. The chains could not handle as they pulled on them, ripping them from the ground. And as they turned towards the moonlight, in a single beautiful moment, they took to the air, flying for the first time, in true freedom. Sirwin was not guiding them. They were guiding themselves, charting a course forwards. He was just a passenger, though at times he would feel the speed grow too fast, only to notice the dragon begin to slow. Sometimes he'd see something in the horizon, and the beast would turn towards it. He gripped tight, feeling that if he let go, he'd be thrown from the saddle, as the two of them rode for the first time that night, and then again the next. Until each night he would get a tighter grip of the reins, he would learn his movements from the saddles. And during the day, he would sharpen his valerian, he would read the books his father had left behind, reminding himself of his ancestry, his lost blood. In his heart, he'd always been a high tower, grown up with them, lived with them, but now he he felt a calling. The calling of the dragon. And Sirwin had never felt so free. Hello guys and welcome to Crusader Kings Free, a game of thrones. Where we will be beginning the story of House Doron, the Valyrian for rocks and cliffs. As we are Lord Sirwin of the Shield Tower, with Cliffs High, our family home. And we are, of course, for this update, this fantastic update we've all been waiting a long time for in CK2. We are a dragon rider upon the back of Sapphire, who hatched within our cradle. A supporting, friendly, voracious, and solitary beast. Spent a long time away from other dragons and within their own cave. In fact, they've never known another dragon. But they are here, yeah, a trained, fertile, fearsome, and majestic dragon. And tamed, of course, tamed beneath us. They've been trained uh, by our father, a man who 
went a little insane in doing so and almost abandoned us just to train this dragon. So we are uh, an interesting sort. We have Valyrian in our blood uh, and we have Hightower in our blood. Hightower being the more well known of the, of the ones we've held. Uh, of course, Honey Holt is impending because he is a Beesbury uh, and Beesbury's on the council. But uh, we, we have relations, even if distant, with the High Towers. But we do not care about that. Our focus is on ourselves. So why don't we... Oh my god, I was about to say, why don't we get to work? Why don't we get rid of Master Forat, because he's awful. Try and get a good council here. Um, this might actually be the best we're going to get of a council. Uh, sure. Choose a patron. Uh, the father, the mother, the warrior, smith, I think the smith or, no, the smith has made that much sense, maybe the mother or the warrior, because we are looking for a son. Our, our wife is uh, Lady Joanna, she is young, she is our age, we have hope that she will have a child soon, hopefully, because we currently have no heir, so our uh, <laughs> our game would end very quickly, so to speak. Let's get our... Let's see, I have a martial trait. Is martial my main? Yeah, martial is my main trait despite having higher. Because I am a uh, skilled tactician. But I have incredible um, stewardship. Mostly from... 10 of it is from the spouse managing domain. But still 15 base is my highest base. Uh, but I wasn't trained on it because my father didn't especially care about it. He... Wanted just to focus on an army. So we, we will go with Chivalry Focus for now at least. And we will go for Lord Leader just to get the Prowse Parents and then I think we go Strategist. We might as well. I mean, if I've been trained such, I think it does make sense to go Warrior. I was 31. Not endorsed by my Septon. Yeah, it's such a scheme to sway him. So here we are. Finally, in Crusader Kings 3, got it, it feels good to be playing here, to be playing with dragons. And I know from, I've already written a lot of what I'm going to be doing for the roleplay for this, and this is going to be a long one to edit, so you guys are probably seeing this a long time after I even finish these. I just completely lose piety? Oh yeah, because I'm sadistic. Um, I think I'm just going to forever be losing piety then. I can't think of a way that I'm going to get that balanced. Oh, here we go. My my wife, Lady Jonna, is bearing my child. That's good. Got pregnant early. She's diligent, wrathful, and paranoid. Sounds about right. The shield tower. Beautiful castle. But Cliffs High is where uh, Sapphire has lived for a long time. This is where we have a, a sort of, not an actual um, dragon pit, but a pseudo dragon pit at the very least. King Viserys is apparently going in and out of existence there. We have an... Oh, it's fucking Gilbert. Fuck you, Gilbert. Oh my god. I absolutely want Gilbert dead. I hate that guy. Where's he going? Oh, he's going to the arbor. Eamon is dead. Balin is dead? Don't know Balin's dead. Uh, Alison is pregnant. The realms, the light, Rhaenyra are off on Dragonstone. Eric. Sirwin. Horace. Orwin. Lionel. Lionel the Ron. That's a good name. Oh, and a very quick and decisive victory here for Damon, who has then surrendered his title, I believe. Um, it looks like he has. Later on, it's because the information will say. So he. What? I. We'll try and see. Okay, jeez. Made up a fake claim for that my wife was incestuous. Jesus. So I'm confused. Has he surrendered the eye, bro? Or I'm not sure what exactly happened there. 
Uh, let's see what we can do with... Let's try and deepen our bond with... Uh, oh, he uses that instead of a ski. Castles, uh, uh, I do that instead of the increased relation. Let's spend time with our dear dragon. We want to get our relation up with him. Deepen the bond, of course. Sure, she would do nothing evil and magic. Oh, does she have... Oh, she does have the witch trait. Interesting. A miracle worker and an elusive shadow. That sounds about right. Prince Makar. That is... I thought I had canon kids on. I guess we'll go for Prince Makar instead, then. A local farmer has brought forth many accusers of stealing crops from his fields. The thief claims that he didn't, so only to feed himself. So he had nothing to eat and is starving. Now the law is clear. So Otto Hightower has no beard. This this is almost disgusting. Gwen is still 14, and Brynden is back at Hightower. God. Otto without a beard. I mean, he is 38 at this point, so... This is still young Otto Heidel, quote-unquote. At first I fought a simple footman, a fool, for stepping into the training field. Although John seemed no threat at first, it came quickly clear that the wound uh, that he would be able to stop... Unable to stop his wild and vicious threats from hurting me, disarming him suddenly became a matter of life and death. I try not to show my relief when the sword finally hit the ground. Interesting. Is that his base? Base 15. Yeah, welcome. You'd make a good knight. The dragon sapphire is understandably wary of me. Though he is no longer truly wild and enjoys some of his comforts, he does not trust me and is reluctant to allow me to draw within even a hundred paces of him. But as all shield men know, the route to anyone's heart is through their stomach. And it, yeah, he is a very big stomach. After consulting with the Kennel Masters of Shield Tower on the flesh and offal favoured by their hounds, I have sent for a wagon of fresh mutton and pork. The meat is yet to be fully butchered, but the Kennel Masters have shown me the rarer the better. Hmm. So it's the same either way. See if she likes sweeter meats. Yes! Raw pork. Wonderful. Sapphire's head rises from the floor with interest as I manoeuvre the meat-laden wheelbarrow into his lair. Pushing up upon his forelimb, Sapphire slowly approaches me, his eyes darting between me and my gory treasures. I heft to one of the thicker cuts and heave it towards him. Before the meat, st meat strikes the ground, Sapphire darts forward and catches it in his jaws. Pleased with the offering, he looks towards me expectantly. I am happy to oblige. I throw him piece after piece, drawing closer to him each time. Knowing better than to push my luck, I throw the last and largest piece of sapphire and leave while he savages the delicacy. Though I am far from being accepted as his dragon rider, we've made will good progress today. I take my morning porridge outside on my balcony, where I behold a brilliant blue sky with nary a cloud in sight. Something in me knows that this is not the day to spend idly inside my castle. It is as if the father himself made today for a singular purpose, flight. And yet I feel cautious. Sapphire's last several flights have not gone well. Over the past few mutants, he has on occasion chosen to selectively ignore those commands he finds inconvenient. Commands that usually relate to me trying to avoid falling to my death. Still, more riding time can improve both rapport and Sapphire's willingness to heed my commands. Let's have a go. Sapphire greets me almost eagerly as I enter his lair catching a saddle. Clearly, I am not the only one yearning for the skies. With uncommon agreeableness, he allows me to attach the saddle and mount him, and with a nod to my attendants, we step out into the open air. As soon as we are clear of the last gate, Sapphire leaps into the air, relishing the freedom. With each beat of his wings, we soar higher and higher, until my castle is but a distinct splotch of colour of color below. He is in rare form today, and under my reign, Sapphire feels as swift as the legendary Nasarium. And as powerful as the infamous Tarax. 
Soaring amidst the heavens, the wind rushes past, lifting hair and spirits alike as the world unfolds below. Our bond grows even stronger. I love this assumed male. Uh, this is this is accurate, and I found it really fun that this is a feature. We don't know the dragon's gender until they hatch an egg. If they never hatch an egg, we can assume they're male. If they hatch an egg, we know they're female. I believe it's why there's some question about uh, Balerion, because there's some sources that say Balerion did have an egg. Others say, no, they never had a egg, they were a male. So, who knows. Each day we operate less and less as a mere team of rider and mount, and more and more as genuine companions bound by real ties of trust and affection. Wonderful. Get our dragon bond experience up. Not our dragon training, though. We're going to have to keep working on the bond over and over. Which is more than fine. We're saving up for... I mean, we basically, we want to secure the shield islands. This is where we want as our base. And the best way to do it is by conquering these and then challenging Oak and Shield for his title. We won't pretend that we don't want this. You know, we are we are authoritative. We are arrogant. A little bit sadistic. You know, we are going to push for what we are going to push for. Uh, get the castle spell I cost down. That's going to be very useful to, for us. The proud applause as I lunge and our admiration makes me bold. So I'm pulling back, I attempt a new technique I've been practicing. The wounds flow through me and into my mace as if uh, as if me and my mace were one. Leo is defenseless before me. I could keep going and wound him. No, we'll, 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 we'll end it there. Well fought. I'm a sadistic, but I don't want to be publicly sadistic just yet. Some days he wants nothing more than to stretch his wings and prance around his shield tower lair. Well, the very next day is all but impossible to coax strain from Mr. Humber. Sapphire's tastes are similarly varied, but while he still eats all the butchered game my service ferry down to him, I'm considering sending him to the kitchen for more delicious rare, uh, more delicious fare. Surely a nice treat would bring us closer together. See if you like pig, you did like pork. The shield tower kitchens work through the night of an offering for Sapphire. The meat is tender and moist and its golden buttered skin crackles near to bursting from the stuffing within. Several of my knights look longingly at the meat as it is loaded from the kitchens, but this delicacy is only fit for lord and dragon. I wheel the cart into Sapphire's lair, and I am not able to call out when the dragon comes lopping in, skidding to a halt just paces away. His head swivels between me and the cart. Although he seems on the verge of lunging for the tantalizing prize, he holds himself back. Pleased to see Hafa has heed me so. I speak the words he longs to hear. Avor Zalvardis. I think that's it. What be? Z Zaldrizis? It's, Valyrian's very difficult to pronounce. I have not learned it. Basically, he was saying, come eat your bloody food. <laughs> oh. A walk through shouting is something deeply present. A plague has arrived in this once thriving metropolis. The infected will contort themselves in holy dances at random intervals between bouts of mindless groaning and farthing on the street. Already people calling this affliction Westerosi fire, and it's happening on my own doorstep. While numbers remain low, it's only a matter of time before this spreads further. Summon the maester. Take a soft approach to this, but Jesus. Um, it's a dancing plague. That's very bad. Um, get you on controlling plagues. Okay, uh, we have early prevention. We're going to seclude for a bit. Hective sachet. Which gives stress loss. Is that a forever or for 10 years? Uh, 10 years is fine then. We'll pay 20 gold for that. We can attack Grey Shield. I want to just go straight into this one. We don't need a big build-up for why we're going to attack Grey Shield. I mean, our early conquests are going to make a lot of sense. We're just going to hit them early, hit them hard, secure the Shield Islands. From that point onwards, that's when we're going to start having long wind build-ups to why we're conquering the like. A fiery arrangement. From the near near the clouds atop Sapphire, I can see an entirety of the Battle of Grey Shield as it involves. Tiny arrangements of our regiments crashing against the lines of our enemy. But up here, they look almost like toys being played with by the commanders in charge. 
My eyes drift to a cluster of rustling banners, making the position of the enemy commanders. I see Morgath. I love that he's so, like, spawn and spit it like that. As most of the other notable enemy warriors are congested around in a single area. Fiery grubs, I think to myself, relishing the flames of camp. Prepare to burn. We've just basically destroyed his entire leading army in dragon fire. I know you can don't use Sapphire and Wall. If your dragon's like old and weak, you definitely do that. But we are absolutely good for using Sapphire and Wall. I'm also going to invite some knights, please. Bonding with Sapphire, live treat. Though it, as it is at times pleasant to forget it, to pretend that they can be as obedient as the best ha as the best hounds, dragons are in the end still predators. My concerns have been mounting that Sapphire is growing increasingly frustrated by the monotony of his captivity and are distraining our tenuous bond. Though I am sure it will be a poor substitute for the joy of a true hunt, I'm considering releasing several pigs or sheep into his lair. While I have been working to break Sapphire of his more violent tendencies, perhaps some live sport would be appreciated. Interesting. Let's uh, lure some hogs in. Again, he loves pig. Oh, he, this time he doesn't like it. Though it's been a part of the day, my servants and I successfully wrangled the last of the livestock into a makeshift pen just outside of his lair. I then set him at a safe distance away and await his arrival. He doesn't keep me waiting long. It's a bloodbath. One moment the animals are there, alive and healthy. And then Sapphire is among them. Like the other predators that seek to divide the herd, my dragon revels in the slaughter, snapping his jaws around one of the larger animals and raking his claws through another. I start to walk towards Sapphire as he finishes to disembarrowing the last of the herd, but freeze when he suddenly rounds me, his nostrils flaring. Fearing his bloodlust, I slowly back away. Oh, we captured him. Yes, after we've burned all of the people around him. He is submitted and surrendered. His castle to me. Now we can just move right on to the next. We're gonna get these four before we take Oak and Shield. But yeah, after that point, that's when we will consider Oh, that's when we'll slow on Conquest. Because I, I've mentioned in almost every one of these series, I don't enjoy Mass Conquest. I'd rather tell a story. Um, we could do with a net, uh, net wet nurse for our son. Uh, we'll get Joanna will do. Same name as my wife. Uh, we can begin getting control up in Grey Shield. Milf Manfred's boils are spreading as well. Don't know who Manfred is, but that's very awkward to have a boils named after you. Uh, we'll pay for disease recovery. The existence of a scheme to murder. Okay, I awakened from a slumber with a start, clutching at my temples as I frantically tried to recall the details of my dream. A dragon soars across the open skies, a shadowy figure crouches behind a scorpion, poison glistening on the tip of its bolts. Dragon roars and falls to the skies, a pierces bolt through its wings. We need to find out who's trying to kill me. Okay, it's really weak, but we should still keep you on disrupt scheme, see if you can find out who's behind this. Let's see how our plague is doing before I emerge from this. Where do I check plagues again? I don't even remember. There's so many things now. Over here. It is so confusing to me to figure it out. It's not one of these. I don't even know. I don't see the plague. It has disease recovery, at least. I think we just uh, we should emerge out anyway. Just so we're not secluded. Declare war on the freed orders. No, thank you. What war can I even declare? Is it Dragon Conquest? It is Dragon Conquest. I was going to say. Would have thought they'd bring that back. CK2. Well, the Dragon Conquest is a little less strong when we don't have um, Essos. But I'm sure that's to come. I'm sure Essos is on its way. 
Lady Rhea Royce. Is that war? Goldtown claim on the Lordship of Goldview. Well, <laughs> poor Royces. And their ass is handed to them. We out with the murder scheme. Literally no one wants to join. Damn. My spouse was coming He said that my guest is scheming against me. Throw him in jail. Maybe this is the guy who's been trying to kill me. And I'm ill? Oh, jeez. Let's torture this guy. Listen to his scream for hours. Is there any illness? It's not the plague, at least. See if we can get Gilbert with some snakes. Yes! I think everybody found out I did it, though. <laughs> I killed Gilbert, but everybody knows I killed Gilbert. Yeah, that piety is just going to keep going down and down, isn't it? Melor has hatched a dragon. Young son. It is the child of Dreamfire. That's fun. Our dragon bond is growing. Our dragon training, barely. But our dragon bond, at least, is growing. Lose a trait ill. No, they've got actually a lot of troops in the Three Daughters. I wonder if there's a dragon tray in here. I wouldn't assume so. Um, try and get our army movement up a bit. I'm progress was faithful. I am never going to be faithful. <laughs> like this is I'm not even sure to get me bonus party. I'd probably have to get items. Spence to court positions. Oh, I could maybe get it through court positions. That's true, actually. Is there any that gives piety? Master of Arms gives diplomacy per level of fame, which could, also could be good. It's a little expensive. Um, give piety? No. Oh, my wife is pregnant again. We'll pick a master... Uh, my my wife is my master at arms. No, let's go with this Sandeman as my master at arms. Doesn't like me, but maybe he'll start liking me if I make him. Oh, he's my maester. Oh, then maybe I shouldn't have made a master at arms. Whoops. Oh well. I mean, I have to get my maester to like me, so maybe I want to keep deepening my bond. Oh, that's the perfect one. Gets us to clean on green shields and on the entire shield islands. We're going for green shield first, of course. Get our troops sent over. Gonna land to top him. I mean, after hearing of dragons used in fights at green shields, surely you'd start realizing that the same is gonna happen to you. Master Otto, Lord Aegon. Is Lord Aegon the actual lord himself? No, it's Lord Wilmore, it is, is the lord. But Lord Wilmore is going to end up being wounded and burned. Sayera swore a death, uh, uh, swore out to avenge the death of Lord Aegon, who was incinerated by Sapphire in battle. Incinerated. They had a kid as well. That is a bit sad. And she owns this little or yeah, she holds that little island there. Useless census. Unwin! Absolutely Unwin. I don't even need to press again. We are absolutely naming him Unwin. It's the greatest name in the history of a Game of Thrones. Stupid sucks. Do I have anyone better? Yeah, you can hire you. You're at least an inch better. Previous guy.
Use dragon. I forgot you can click on him here. I stand before the walls of green shield. My dragon sapphire at my side. Our men surrender holdings. The defenders trapped within, covered behind their walls. Though he would doubtless force him to surrender with enough time, no walls would protect him from dragon fire. It's not without risk, but I could ride sapphire to unleash his flames upon the castle. Hmm. We strike easy targets for softening their defenses. Which gives a fort level of minus six for four months. Uh, and it will make me upset because I'm sadistic. Alright, we'll, we'll be a little sadistic then. Siege of Brave Shield, the doomed bravery. The defenders of Green Shield have been harassing us with arrows and spears, the men diving into the stronger fortifications where they can avoid our flames. Finally, I see an opening, a group of archers who have been foolish enough to gather all together. Only kept in cover by a small archway, I direct da Sapphire to dive, to strike. As I do, I see a trap all too late. Above an archway, a group of defenders have been awaiting on top of the adjacent roof. As we swoop, they jump towards Sapphire. Though many miss and shatter on the stone belief, some of the brave fools find purchase, their downwards thrust finding their mark and digging into Sapphire, held by their spears and swords. Sapphire roars in agony and arcs up, though many of the defenders uh, throws, throwing many of the defenders off, the rest fall into their doom below. Slightly wounded Sapphire. Oh dear. Which is a, it says critical penalty, but it's because dragons have so much health that if you hover over it, you see it's still good. Like, it is absurd health bonuses. Godlike boost for a tamed dragon. We'll ransom him off because I can still enforce demands. I have to wait for him to pay for Oh! Actually, he won't. My bad. I guess it was because it was his heir. Well, let's go kill this army and then he'll probably have little choice when we take this castle. Held by the daughter of a man I already slew. They full fully stopped, but that's not going to last. If we own these, we'd be in a really strong position. Oh, good. Sapphire's recovered fully. Let's take Oaken Shield. I don't think I'll also take small shields. I think I may just go straight into Oaken Shield. Ah! Here we go. This is what I was talking about, about Revealed. So up till now, I and the rest of the world have been assuming that Sapphire was a male. I am now sensing through our bond that, in fact, Sapphire is female. The world eagerly awaits new eggs that she may lay. Well, that's, I assume we'll change also all of the events now to instead say she dragon instead of dragon. Or she instead of he. Good stuff. Uh, this is going to be super low control, isn't it? <laughs> I can't imagine the control in there is going to be any good. Claim his title. It's no longer valid to send. Why not? Oh, because I have a claim on it. That's why. Makes sense. But I assume this means that even if I were to die, my heir would have the claim. Though I would very much appreciate not dying. Because that would be very helpful. Lord Paramount Mathos is being attacked by Lord Dennis of the Ocean Road. Is he attacking alone? Yes, it would seem so. It's Mathos Terrell. This is not going to end well for him. We could just sit here on our coast and watch it all happen. In this a guardian for my son, I will be his guardian. We're going to do Serve the Crown just to get control growth up, because we seriously are going to need it in these two. It is a bit sad not having a court. It means there's a lot less you can do if you don't have a court. Uh, there could be some activities we can do. If we can do a, surely we can do a hunt. Not employing a master. Let's get a master of the hunt then. All right, game. Master of the hunt. Or brother, whatever the second line is. Uh, we'll get the guy we hired, John Haven Scribe, to be our master. The hunt. A hunt in in shield tower is probably going to be best, isn't it? Because they're all going to be very equal. So we'll do it in. Here, because there's hunting grounds. Have a large party with us. For recreation. See if uh, anybody actually comes to my hunt on the aisles. Let's go for the lynx. You'd imagine hunting on these aisles like this would be very popular. Because I'm thinking, you know, IRL, there are many, many 
islands where there are very rare breeds and species of Ooh, um, let's try this one. Rare species on these islands. Hunt fails. Oh, God damn it. Fortunate. Not going to do a grand tournament. I could do a university visit because it's not too long to get to Old Town. I could do with educating myself, becoming a better tactician, perhaps. We could even say that, you know, I'm heading there to pick up perhaps some ancient books on dragons, although I can't imagine that we have them. The Stout. I'm a beam and stocky. I am a broad of beam and stocky of frame. Spectacular, is it not? It's on the limbs of every peasant and noble alike. A cause for celebration, I think, Joanna says. Well, if that is what they wish to call me. It's like Duncan the Tall. Sir Win... Honestly, Duncan the Tall. Sir Win the Stout is perfect. Is that alliteration? Sir Win the Stout of Shield Tower. <laughs> uh, I could give him gold for it. No, you, you should keep your, your tooth, Lionel. Lionel's first in robing. My lord, no one can find your garments. Oh, is this the Prince of Fashion thing? That has given not only my raiments, but the boy's wet nurse. I had no part in it. He dressed himself, Joanna responded with a giggle. Little schedule. So he's a Prince of Fashion. You always get this Prince of Fashion event, I swear. It's so common. Maybe it's just some common traits that kids want to steal their dad's clothes. Nearly got our dragon bonds to full. And then we can rest Dragon Bond. Because Dragon Training, I believe, just comes through battle. Time spent training or in combat together. Maybe when my Bond is full, I, I will be able to directly train. <clears throat> Actually gaining piety now. Where from? Religious relations are oh, because he's not. Yeah, he's not doing religious relations. Okay, so I will. I can gain bonuses when I do that. Alien or Valerian, seaports and trade and stalls alike hum with anticipation of anxiety. As a newly hatched dragon egg, uh, a newly hatched dragon's egg, the fleeting conversation of a girl named Elenor. I gave Elenor Valerian, who's hatched her egg. She has named her hatchling Maelstrom. So Elenor's little sister. What the hell happened to Lena? Yeah, God, she's the figure. I wonder if Lena's going to survive this time by. Part of me thinks he may not. Chicken pox is spreading all over the place. Jesus. Now another war? For the claim of Bywater. Why is, the, why is the entire reach getting involved in a war over Bywater? Mm -hmm. It'd be really close in combat strength. We went up against him. Maybe we'll spend a little bit of time. I just don't have any men at arms. So what do we have? Because uh, I literally have never played a Shield Islander before. So I'm not fully sure of the um, bonuses one would be granted. Hmm. Okay. Armoured Footmen. Misty Shields. The yeah, Misty Shields are Armoured Footmen. Hailing for the Shield Islands, these regiments are battle tested against the most fearsome Ironborn Reavers. They're ready to respond to raids in moments and moments. Lots of negatives, but also some very good positives in our own land. Not more negative than the base, actually. That's surprising just how many more negatives there are. Hand messengers. So these are the breachmen ones. They are just better f horsemen. Because, I mean, armored horsemen would be too expensive for us anyway. Pikemen. It's surprised we don't maybe have our own light footmen. I would have thought that would be ours. Makes sense. Um, we'll pick up a Misty Shield just because it's cheaper. And we'll increase its size to two. Give it some time to build up. 
You see, it is expensive. It's going to be costing us a lot, so we're not going to upgrade that by too much. I just want to have a base level of a strong armoured footman. I mean, armoured horsemen are too expensive for anyone to afford, if we're being honest. Unless you're like the Lannisters or the Fro, you are not going to be affording those. Broken. Interesting. So, if you lose your dragon, you lose a bit of health. Get prestige. That's a big legitimacy. That's interesting. God, she's had a lot of kids, hasn't she? Maker, Maylor, Gaiman, Maylis. No daughter yet. Can I stop getting ill? Why do I keep getting ill? I. With Vivid Clarity, I remember when I defeated Wilmore at the Battle of Greenshield. It was about that to play, play in, uh, took place in planes, a terrain I was greatly unprepared for. Since then, I've learned, been mulling things over, so I could get open terrain expert, advantage in planes, farmland steps and frozen flats, or flexible leader, enemy defensive advantage. I, I like a flexible leader a lot more, because re weakening your enemy's strength is a lot more beneficial than you would think. Control ones, and then we go back to strategist. Jesus. Mathos died of his wounds, and now his son is also wounded. <laughs> Reach is in absolute shambles here. We're about to have a boy ruler here in Jocelyn. Yeah, me. Garth of the Reach also died of his wounds. Stop dying of their wounds, please. I just lose control somewhere? Okay, no, we're, we're getting control pretty well. All over. Ooh. Can I get Unwin's prowess up? Sure. Let's get Unwin learning diplomacy. As far as I think this entire time my son's not been on a focus. No, he hasn't been, hasn't he? I had him on learning. Can I switch him? Yeah. A legendary sighting. Ooh. We're going to take a chance at that, aren't we? Go for the legendary. Old bluff. Uh, we'll hire an experienced captain, just because we sort of have to. Low success chances. So, I, mean, I assume me being ill is certainly not going to help the success chance of this. A white bear, come on. Perilous journey, gentlemen. Hmm. Only a thirty percent chance. Let's trust. Let's trust John. I am riding when the sound system is palpable. Even the sound of my horse's hooves seem to melt away. Just as I am soon to turn around the fact that I, I glimpsed before me, glorious dream, a bear as white as snow. The rumours were true. I think the bear's gonna come home. He has. And it f come on. What do you mean it fails? I assume this means I can try again another time, but I probably just can't try. I can try again immediately? Well, let's see. Let's try and have me not be ill for a little while then. Because we have until. We have three years to give it a go. Poet, diplomacy per level of fame, and stress loss, journaler, learning. Right, let's go with diplomacy per level of fame. Oh, look, I'm no longer ill. Guess what I'm going to do? There's only one place he can be. If he wasn't where he was before, I'm going to bring attendants with us. Oh, I can't host it for 21 months. Okay, never mind. There is a limit on when I can host it. Fair enough, game. Fair enough. I just thought it would be funny to go and get them again. Let's station our men in the shield tower. Well... We are now outnumber him, so we can definitely push against him. But that is where I'm going to call it for this episode. We have strengthened our bond with Dear Sapphire. Now 32 years of age. We are in a really close relation with them. They've got a good temperament as well. But our problem now 
is going to be that our dreams have shown us there are people trying to murder us, and illnesses and plagues have continued to spread. Uh, plus, this white bear, I consider that to be something worth taking another look at. But all of that stuff is yet to come. I hope that this first episode has been an interesting little tale. Obviously, not too much has been happening, but a lot of that is simply because early on we need to settle and get ourselves a court set up. And from that point onwards, our story grows and grows. I mean, just look at what happened with House Crate. I'm really looking forward to this. I think we can go a long time here. And I hope that you will stick with me and join me on the journey to come. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I will see you in the next episode. Until then.